while Reese is setting up everything, um, yeah, so <laughs> up next is uh, Reese. So what he's going to present about is about Tingle, and it was one of his, uh, it was his master thesis actually, and after that he started developing it further. What's Tingle? Tingle is a haptic musical instrument, uh, which he's going to demo as well. Um, so up until now, Reese had several startups actually. Uh, one of them is Nupke, and until now, he uh, recently he was design director of OO Studio, and he was actually uh, nominated as one of the uh, hundred Holland's top creatives. So, uh, if you're ready, you can yeah. start. He's going to show us more about the thing. So hey, um, I'm Reese, and. Uh, that's fancy talk for I design things with products and digital combined. And uh, today we're talking about a product I designed called Tingle. I'm not gonna actually show it here on stage, you can try it afterwards, but this is what it does. So that went a bit quick uh, because I clicked the button. But anyway, um, <laughs> so, uh, uh, this project started with the fact that I found out that only 7% of the schools in Holland, uh, the primary schools, have music lessons. This means that 1.6 million kids in 7,000 schools in Holland alone don't get music lessons. 7%, super small number in a country that's rather liberal on the arts. And why is this a problem? Well, a kid uh, sits down at an instrument and has to dedicate a lot of time and effort put in a lot of discipline, and, uh, and for their effort, they get rewarded with sound, songs even. And this hits right through our emotional cortex. So you are rewarded for behaviors that are very valuable later on in your life. But how do you get kids who are uh, now playing video games or sitting on an iPad, uh, who get instant gratification, how do you get them to sit down for a long period of time to play a music instrument when the school isn't instigating it in any single way? A music instrument is hard to learn. It's uh, hard to master in a sense. Um, and uh, compared to the digital world, it's kind of boring. But luckily, music actually has the digital world already. Uh, and these, these types of instruments have hundreds of thousands of different instruments in one thing. You can basically play an entire band right at your fingertips, and it's actually easier. Um, but I found that there was a fundamental issue with this. These controllers tell a computer certain values uh, like between 0 and 1024, which uh, result in a sound synthesis. And the way we communicate with the computer is through human interface devices, which are dials, sliders, and buttons. These are what we had, so we didn't think much about it and just put it into a device and said, that's how we control music. And this loses a lot of the sense and feeling that you get from other music instruments, like guitars and pianos, which are based more on uh, the physical limitations of the real world. And this brought me to my first question, which was, can we make a music instrument that entices a non-artist to try music in the 21st century? Uh, this, uh, to do this, I thought, it's maybe smart to take uh, inspiration from what the kids are already looking at now, and a part of that was game design. So uh, the main problem was that instruments are hard to learn, hard to master, but how do you get someone triggered to start without? Well, maybe make it easy to learn, but still that if you put in the effort, uh, you don't actually hit a plateau. You can keep getting better and better and better and, and becoming a master. And to do that, I used Bushnell's theorem, which is uh, the 15 minute rule. In the first 15 minutes, you gotta convince someone that the game is fun, and then they're addicted. <laughs> uh, the way they do this, they give you a, uh, a certain skill, and you practice and practice the skill until you're a master at it. And then uh, you're uh, confronted with a mini boss. Once you beat the mini boss by testing your skill, you get a new skill, which makes the previous part of the game easier for a short bit before you have to practice that skill. And you keep doing that and so and so on until you reach the final boss and you have a whole bunch of skills and you're actually become a master at this in a very linear sort of logical way. And so this is what I wanted to try to apply to music, but I also wanted to have some sort of artistic special specialness to this that you couldn't get with an acoustic instrument. You know, where with digital, why not do something special? For this, I looked at synesthesia, which is a physiological phenomenon where two, two or more senses are combined. Uh, this can be a whole bunch of things, but I was interested in sight and sound being mixed. There's a lot of uh, famous composers who, as they were playing music, could literally see ribbons of color through the air uh, or look at a painting and hear the song that that painting would play. And I thought this would be a fucking A, I want this. You know, this is, this is cool. 
So I started coming up with a whole bunch of ideas. Um, I'm not really a good drawer, as you can see, but, but it was okay. It got, it, this wasn't even all of them, but I, I was more, most triggered by these three. Um, and that was because I was kind of interested in what instrument, without any prompting, would cause a kid to start playing the music. Well, uh, you need something that they will just walk up to and pick up without it being any music in it. And this was a pin art toy, a, a cloth, which you could drape over something, and then when you played the cloth, it had a different sound depending on what it was draped over. Or uh, a clay form, which you mold and shape, and that shape defines the flavor of the sound, and then you play the, the shape. So I wrote these things into uh, a music lesson that I was giving at a, a, a lower education school in Amsterdam. Uh, I signed up to be a music teacher for a day, having no real prior training to being a music teacher. So that was <laughs> great. Um, and I brought, I brought these things in to try to see which, which objects they would pick up first. And I actually had a whole bunch. I had about uh, 20 different objects. Um, and the one I disliked most was that pin art one. And so naturally, that was the one that the kids straight went for and just got mm -hmm. addicted to and uh, mm -hmm. ignored all the other devices. And the reason I didn't like this one was <coughs> because I had no idea how I was going to make this into a music instrument. It was sort of, uh, to me, it was an impossible project. And I was just talking about how actually that, that's the great thing about impossible projects is if you think, yeah, OK, just give it a go, you might actually make it happen. So I started looking at how to do this, and I uh, looked into uh, using webcams and programming my own software so that you could figure out where the fingers press. And from there, uh, you could, I uh, could capture what was happening on the surface and turn that into music. I even redesigned it so it would be a plectrum shape, which is linked to sound, you know, a guitar. And also has, when you're holding it, it would be like this, so it's kind of an open gesture to the public which I also liked. Um, I showcased this at some exhibitions, and the kids were lining up to play this. And the same kids who can't be motivated to look at something for more than two or three minutes were now spending a half hour on this thing, and kids were fighting to get a chance to play on it. And that's when I thought, god damn, OK, there's potential here. I'm going to start a business. Uh, this is going to be successful. So, But there was kind of an issue with this. Uh, I need to make. Uh, that thing that you see here is super susceptible to light coming in from the outside. If they shook the table, it was all over the place. The sensing was bullshit. So I had to work on that first. Tingle is a new musical instrument which is used to teach music. It looks like the <coughs> pinboard toy from your youth, except that the 3D landscapes you created with whatever you put underneath it now translates into a musical sound. Your hands mold and form the sound to generate a musical landscape. The problem was that it worked with a webcam, so you couldn't actually play it as a musical instrument. So I built a new sensor. This sensor can measure every single pin, and it measures it instantaneously. Studio, uh, to the studios of these artists. 
Thank you. 